Okay, so this is lecture one, uh, topic one, uh, for data management and security. So this is our kind of our introduction to the course, um, the introduction to database systems. A couple things we're going to be talking about uh, in this first piece, and understanding the concept of data, the differences between information and knowledge. Um, define some of the terms. So some of the terms we're going to be dealing with, stuff, like for example, databases and identify the steps for creating one, understand objectives, and consideration for, of dat for databases and database management systems. What's the difference between those two? Okay. These are uh, some readings. You can take a look at these, kind of provide a little bit more background around some of the concepts we're, uh, we're talking about, and particularly this one here. You know, we're not looking to, uh, you know, the we're not going to do in-depth uh, study of, of uh, relational database theory, but we will talk about it. So, you know, we're going to be talking about some other concepts in this. By looking at that, it might give you a little bit more insight if you have questions. Uh, there's also a video. Uh, you could do a similar, in, in a similar fashion, give us a, uh, about 30 minutes long. Right. So, um, you know, to start off with, as we're, as we're looking at this stuff, you know, we, we, we talk about this idea of a data, right? So the, so the concept of data, data can be described in a number of different ways. One description here is a collection of facts. Uh, another one would be a recording of some event or measurement um, in some fashion, you know, kind of more of a generic terms. What we're talking about in this course, though, so data can take on a lot of different forms. So, like for example, if you read, you read a book, book, you know, the concept, the contents of a book is data, all right? What we're talking about in this particular course, the scope of this is really going to be digital data. So the type of data that we um, uh, have taken, we have digitized, and you know, or is processable by a computer. And so, so the definition here is like a digital, you know, digital data is a you know collection of um, measurements, events of different things, of facts. Right? You know, the idea though that is so. Without data in itself is you know basically a you know as you say it's a collection, but there's not a lot of context to it. There's kind of an overall def you know kind of okay this is a description of what the collection is, but from our perspective, from you know from a uh, you know a human perspective, what we really focus on we really focus on information. All right, so data is kind of raw. All right, whereas information is processed. All right, so it's a presentation of facts in an organized fashion. All right, the key thing is when you're dealing with this, like ocean, if you can imagine just a, an unformed ocean of data, you know, when you convert that to date, when you convert that to information, what you're doing is you're providing context, right, and definitions, and things, and then structure to it. All right, so that's really what that, you know, that's that first two letters. Now, and also the thing to remember about this stuff is. From a computer perspective, we've been doing this stuff, this whole data to information transformation conversion. We've been doing this a long, long time. There are, computers do this stuff very, very well. Um, the next level up, though, as we get to information, so information is kind of a, you know, kind of a the next layer up where we, we take, you know, all these facts and create, you know, bring order to them, all right? But the next layer up is where we move into what we call knowledge, right? So you know, the use of knowledge, knowledge is where we use the information to try to make informed decisions. You know, the idea of, you know, basically any form of, of human endeavor um, involves decision making. You know, do we do A, do we do B? Do we, you know, do we select this path or do we select that path? In order to make those types of decisions, what you want to do is we want to be as informed as possible. Know, what are the possible outcomes? You know, if, if road A, you know, leads you over a cliff, uh, you know, you'd like to know that before you, you, you choose that particular path. All right. So, you know, so this idea of using of taking information, using it in you know, in the form of knowledge to make an informed decision. And finally, the next level up is where we get to, um, in a broader in a broader context, basically kind of combining all of these together. And blending in kind of the human experience, uh, and combining knowledge and human experience is really a, a providing a deeper understanding. So, um, computers have been for the longest time been doing one and two. 
uh, probably for about the past 20 years. They've been very, very helpful in this, you know, taking information and be able to translate that into knowledge that you can be used in making decisions. Wisdom is still to, you know, for the most part, a, a human thing. All right. So it's a combination of knowledge combined with human experience. Now, what's been happening in the areas like when we talk about artificial intelligence, which is not necessarily a new thing. It's been around a while. But the latest developments in artificial intelligence combined with things like what we call machine learning, um, that, you know, you, you can simulate something like it. But, you know, if, you know, we're still, you know, people, humans are still in the driver's seat in, in this domain of wisdom. And so this, uh, you know, link here to uh, an article which provides more, you know, a little bit more insight, a little bit more detail around the difference between this data, information, knowledge, and wisdom uh, breakdown. Uh, one of the things we've seen, though, or, you know, one of the things, one of the manifestations we've had is over the past, you know, as we've gotten more and more data, we've applied more and more of this stuff, applied more and more technology into this space. What we're finding is it's we don't lack for data. If anything, what we have is we have too much data. Right? Human mind can only absorb so much, and because we, we, I, I think our, you know, our, uh, the human brain. I think for if you were to translate it into digital uh, capacity terms, is about seven about seven terabytes. It's a pretty big amount of pretty fairly large amount of data. However, you know, you, you still have to process it, you know, input it, organize it structure it so so there's limitations around how much you can put in at any given point in time so what happens is what we've been seeing is more and more and more we're finding that the amount of information uh, you know can become overwhelming so the idea is you know the ability to even take that take information and it does information to knowledge and being able to organize it and be able to to, to control it and better direct it is is, is, is an imperative and so, you know, so, so, you know, kind of introducing this concept, you know, data is an organizational asset. You know, one of the big things that's happened over the years is there was an assumption from, you know, basically non-technical people that because this stuff comes out of a computer, it's a technical thing. The reality is it's not a technical thing. The technical thing is simply, simply where we store it, um, you know, and how we present it, but it's not. You know, the, uh, other than that, it really is more of an, an organizational uh, asset. So what happens is, and this has been a, it's kind of a slow process, but we, we're starting to see, you know, more, a lot of work has been done in this area. A lot more needs to be done in this area um, is to, you know, develop people and procedures and processes to effectively manage data and be able to deal with data and be able to make good decisions with data and put data in the right place at the right time. All right, so really the main use of data is this idea of supporting decision making. Um, and then, you know, the organization from, organ you know, the task of managing organizational data, data processing functions really falls into what we call the information technology, you know, organizations. It's basically, you know, that, that, group within a, within a organization that is particularly focused on managing technology, standing up systems, running them operationally, uh, per, you know, tuning performance. And so, so that's the kind of the stewardship, the organizations that, um, you know, are, are tasked with, with dealing with this stuff, but not necessarily owning it. You know, so the idea is that a lot of this organizational data, you know, this asset, this organizational asset is stored in what we call a database. All right, so this concept of a database is just a place where we store data. And what, you know, a definition of this, and we'll talk more about the definitions of this stuff over the course of the term, but, we, you know, the idea, think of a database as you know, it's an integrated set of files that can be shared across multiple users. You know, kind of the idea of it's, you know, it's a place where we put stuff in a, in a, in a very simple fashion. This idea of database planning. So planning... You know, it takes a lot of work. Or it's not an individual. It's collections of individuals with different skills and different expertise all kind of coming together. All right? So the idea is, you know, this stuff doesn't happen automatically. You know, left to its own devices, you know, data will devolve into chaos. You know, data and information can easily devolve into chaos. 
right? So the idea is you need to develop uh, approaches to, you know, to, to develop efficient access to required information. So the idea of creating a master plan and executing against that plan and understanding where things are at, you know, the, the creating data, you know, specific design. So it's a lot of work, you know, think about, you know, when you're creating this kind of design, you know, data design, data architecture for some type of operation. It could be any type of operation. It could be a hospital, it could be, you know, a military organization, it could be, you know, a, a corporation. But any of these things, you know, you need to d establish, you know, a detailed design and implementation program and stick to that in order to achieve what you want to achieve. Now, we talk about databases. So there's there's two concepts to look at. One is this kind of idea of a database. A database is a, you know, a, we call it a collection of files that holds data, you know, that can be then turned into information. And then there's something called a database management system. So a database management system is software. It's a program, a very sophisticated program, uh, that is basically designed to run a database, to let you access, provide access and control, and uh, basically make sure the database, uh, the database is set up and will operate the way uh, we expect it to be. All right, so the idea of, you know, these are commercial software packages you know, and they are designed to provide the basis for building database systems. You know, so the idea is that, you know, it's the programs that do the access, all right, and to, and to be able to, to, you know, load data, to be able to read it, to be able to change it, to be able to remove it, is all done through the program. So the programs are designed, and it's not just one program, it's a, you know, it's a big, complicated set of systems, you know, different pieces of things that are designed to do this stuff. So the database management system itself is what actually creates and manages the databases and changes the database structure. And it's really what we, people, uh, interface with. To, you know, so we're not going directly against data. We're not going directly against the files. We're working through this database management system to do this stuff. You know. There's a couple different designs, a couple different ways these things have been implemented over the years. You know, with databases. So databases have been around about maybe 50, 60 years. We've had different forms of databases. Uh, we'll talk, what we're going to focus on in this class is something called a relational database model, which is coming up on about its 50th anniversary. All right. But prior to that, for about maybe 20, 25 years, there was a, other forms of non-relational databases, which were, you know, actually came out of the Apollo space program. All right, but they've. But right now, what we're working with, what we're talking about, is something we're going to call a relational model. All right, so there's three types of systems. One is what we call a transaction processing system, and really, what that's designed to do is to, you know, provide um, the support of applications that provide, you know, kind of core business functions. So we talk about, you know, inventory management, accounting functions. You know, they're very well defined, so it's a trans, and the reason it's called transaction processing, you know, you execute these things one step at a time, each step being an individual transaction. So if you're going to buy something, if you're going to purchase something from Amazon, there's about, you know, six or seven steps you need to go through, all right? So you need to log on to the system, you need to search for products, you need to, uh, check out, you need to uh, submit payment, you need to have payment approved, you need to be, you know, give uh, a delivery address, you'll be able to generate. All of these things, each one of these things is a transaction, a step in an overall process. All right, so that's what this transaction processing systems are. We see this all the time. This is used all the time. All right, very common. Uh, management information systems is the next level up. All right, so if you, if you look at this idea of Think of it in terms of data to information to knowledge. Transaction processing systems, what they do is they do a very good job of generating data, lots and lots of data. All right. Management information systems are designed to take that data and turn it into information to um, information to help uh, you know, be able to do report oriented, be able to, you know, uh, group and analyze data, abstracting data from taking from all these individual transactions. If you think about, you know, a, you know, I got a thousand people entering orders. Right? Each one are, are creating on average, say, 10 transactions per, uh, 
per uh, order, all right? Inform management information systems will take all of those, you know, individual transactions and be able to let you group them and organize them into some sort of, you know, some sort of fashion so you can actually make, you know, analyze and look and make decisions. Decision support systems. So this is the data to information. Decision support systems are where we take the information that we generate and then be able to put it into a, for, to a form where we can facilitate support decision making. All right. So it's you know, if you look at these three types of applications, they're aligned very, very much with this idea of, you know, in, you know transactions equal data, MIS, management information systems, equals um, information, and decision support systems dealing with knowledge. So some examples here. So you know, the, we talk about the DMS. They're, as I said, they're software programs. Big, complicated. You know, I didn't mention not just a program, collections of programs. It's a system of programs. Um, and basically, you buy them. You buy a license to use them. All right. So some of the big ones we know of, the big players, Oracle, um, first commercial relational database systems, but uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, IBM DB2, IBM, D, IBM did a lot of the original research, you know, and DB2 is their implementation of that. Other companies you might, may or may not have heard of, uh, Sybase, it's another pro, another company in this in this area. Uh, MySQL, though, a little bit different. Uh, it's an open source relational database system, or open source DBMS. Right. We're going to be using this over the course of the class to provide examples. You're going to get to see kind of a hands-on. You know, as we move through the semester, we're going to be doing some hands-on work or with these relational database systems. MySQL um, is an open source system. What that means is we can use it license-free. Doesn't mean it's free necessarily. You know, we don't own the database, but the licensing of it is such a fashion so we can use it. All right. And then that's and these are what we call enterprise database systems made by corporations, large orga, large organizations, large operations. Personal DBMSs are you know basically do the same thing. Um, the only difference is they're really used on like you know on individual users on their on for example on a on a uh, laptop. So Microsoft Access, which is part of Microsoft Office, has been around a long time. It's it's probably the the least used tool in Microsoft Office, but it is a Honest to goodness, database management system is it does the same basic things, the same things you can do with an enterprise scale Oracle system or DB2 system. You can do an access, the same basic mechanics, the same basic rules around the stuff come into play. So this whole idea of a database, the creation of a database, a database is a uh, requires you know, a design effort. So we talk about the, you know, the first step is to do a requirements analysis, which involves the the five W's. So the five W's are, you know, who, what, when, where, who, what, when, where, and why. So basically what you do is that in looking at any particular situation, you want to design a data model for, a database model around, is to go through and you analyze it. And you ask those five questions and you gather that information. Once we develop that information, you did, it then gets organized into something what we call a logical design step. And we'll go more into, we'll go more into this as we go ahead. But this idea of creating a, basically pictures, drawing the pictures of how all these things are designed and how they're all put together. So, you know, what we call schema and subschema, which is basically the pictures of what these things look like. So we'll we'll be going much more in depth around this right now. But I just want to introduce the concepts at this point. And then the third. We have physical design. So the physical design establishes how the data is actually stored on a computer, on the files, where are they at, you know, on, on the actual computer themselves. All right. So all three of these, you know, all these different design phases, you know, are things that we will do as we go through it. And it's like an iterative process. So you start off with, the, you know, gathering your requirements, translating those requirements into some sort of logical design, then translating the logical design into a physical implementation at some point. So a couple terms, and you know, as we just kind of talked about, kind of matching this stuff up, you know, data modeling. Basically, how is organization, how is data organized? What's the structure of it? 
So, you know, the first step is to kind of take, gather all these things and put it, put them in some sort of fashion, some sort of model that we can work with. All right. Um, taking that data, taking that data model, and then kind of translating it into a logical format is the next step. And then physical, you know, is the physical organization as we put it onto a computer. So this is, you know, this is on a, so the, this is on a piece of paper. You know, this is as it sits on the computer. So the database design, you know, the idea of, you know, this different structure of data, you know, is the starting point for this. And then what you do is you kind of gather all these, you know, you, you do with all your requirements and kind of translate it into a bunch of data, data fields. You know, what are the different types of data? The next step is going to be organizing it into kind of a broad set of, of uh, you know, a collection into, I guess, what we would call fields, get organized into a table. Right. And we'll, we'll go through this. This becomes a little bit more clear when, as we start going through the pictures. But if you can imagine, you know, it's a, you know, the, the, the construct of a, of a database, a relational database is a table, which is made up of fields, which looks like a spreadsheet. So think of it as a, as a spreadsheet, though it's not. Spreadsheets are not necessarily databases, per se. All right. we'll, we'll be talking about the specific differences around them. All right. So the idea is one of the rules around this stuff around a table is that every row has to have a has to be unique which means that one field has to have a unique value in it All right so it's a value that doesn't change and is it is no other no other row or no other record has it All right. that's what we call primary key and then what, what happens is as we'll create so a database is more than one table. Databases can be many tables. Can be thousands of tables, or depending upon how many tables we have, you know, how many how many you need to to describe something. Right? And it's a function of what you're describing. All right? So the idea of you know you have relationships between tables, uh, multiple tables. So like enterprise applications, like uh, like ERP systems, can have a hundred thousand tables in them. So I'll give you an idea. And they're connected in different ways, in different fashions. And the secret sauce about relational databases is if you ask, if you set the things up the right way, if you define, if you follow the rules and you ask the questions the right way, the answers you will get will always be correct. All right. So there's a couple of things. This is sort of, as I like to, I'll use the term motherhood and apple pie. You know, the objectives of a database systems. Uh, you know, you want to have, you know, Flexibility for the easy, for the easy retrieval of selected data items and presentation in different formats. Uh, you want to make sure you have data integrity. You know, so data integrity means data is correct. Right? Just because it, something comes out of a computer doesn't mean it's correct. Right? One of the earliest terms, one of the oldest terms in the data in computer industry is something called garbage in, garbage out, ego. So ego means if you put garbage in, simply putting into a computer doesn't make it any better. All right, so basically, you know, so if you put garbage in, you will get garbage out. So the objective with data integrity is we want to make sure things are correct, consistent, and current. Um, data security is to make sure that data is protected. You know, privacy is protected. People who aren't supposed to look at data can't look at it. All right, so and also to make sure that it doesn't get destroyed or lost or mangled or whatever. So that's really what's in this whole. Um, domain of data security. We'll be talking more about data security. Um, other, some other attributes, other objectives. We're looking at data independence, uh, reduce data redundancy. You know, with the idea of that, you know, facts are correct, but also you have a single source of truth. Uh, you can share it as needed across, you know, different different parties in an organization. Um, the data element, the data has, provides standardization. Across the board, you don't you don't represent the same thing three or four or five different kinds of ways, and also it facilitates the idea of a database system. It facilitates personal productivity. So this idea, we kind of as we talk about this, you know, for you know access flexibility. You know, you want to have the easy retrieval of selected database items and presentations in different formats. And it's one of the strengths, one of the reasons why organizations have used this stuff and it has been so powerful 
over the past couple of years is that you can look at things and do things with data in all sorts of different ways. Because people have different, you know, you have different needs, different requirements, and it can meet all of those requirements. Uh, there's a way of doing this that is provided with the database. We'll be talking about this more. Something called a structured query language. And basically, it's a programming language. It's the language through which you, as a person, ask the question to a database to get an answer. Right? So, you know, the idea of the, all this data is in the, in the system. You want to get an, you want to get a response. You want you have a question. You want to get an answer. You use this SQL to kind of construct what the question is, and then you get the answer back. In addition, in addition, we also have what we call data manipulation. So, it, you know, part of the stuff is getting, you know, you want to get data out. And that's one of the pre. It's, it's a big. It's a big area of concern. But we also want to be able to make adjustments. We want to be able to, you know, to create data and collect data and update data. So, we, there's a set of commands that really what we call data manipulation language or DML and basically lets us add, retrieve, ch or change data values in the database. And we'll be talking more about this uh, as we as we move ahead. And finally, we also have some other tools. You know, depending upon the type of database system, this might be in there. The idea of you know ability to have a report generator, screen generator, you know, these 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 particular functions are you know basically uh, what each application kind of will bake in you know uh, as part of as part of the function so Oracle has functionality around that DB2 is functionality around that access has functionality around it you know we'll be looking at some of this stuff within open text as within open SQL as well um, as a product metadata so metadata is a description you know one of the things we talked about is that one of the big areas we focus on is what we call you know um, Describing, drawing pictures, you know, creating data models. All right. So the metadata is data about the data. It describes stuff. Everything we put into a database needs to be described, needs to be defined. We need to put rules around it. All right. The field is this many, this many characters long. It has this many. You know, it should be of this type. Is it a date? Is it, you know, a string of characters? Is it a numeric value? Is it a currency? Can it be positive? Can it be negative? So all of these different things describing what this thing is, you know, um, within this metadata, within the database, you, you, there'll be capabilities built in, built into these databases, what we call structural uh, capabilities that lets us be able to deal with this stuff. So things like data dictionaries and schemas, we'll be actually looking at this with MySQL around this. And then finally, administrative the ability to provide security, you know, and you know, management and processing of this stuff. All right, so all these things are kind of baked into these database management systems. So there's five elements when we look at this thing overall. The big picture when we look at this stuff, uh, you know, the big picture around this stuff is, you know, there's things that we need to put together. To be able to create a system, a database system. All right. So it's people, hardware, software, the databases themselves, and then the the processes and techniques we use. So it's not, you know, it's not a simple thing. It's not a necessarily a trivial thing. You know, it's really a balance of different things all kind of coming together and working together to ultimately give you an outcome that you is desirable. You know, a couple of things, the characteristics, ideally, what we like to see in a database is, you know, a plan, a well-planned database, a modular design of a database. So, you know, things are organized in such a fashion so you can maintain it and work with it. All right. One of the things that's interesting um, is that, you know, it's easy to write a system, an application or a system or a database that works, but is really, really hard. You know, it's not well defined. It's not well documented. Not well designed. You know, and you know, it becomes a real challenge. You know, maintaining and sustaining this over longer period of time. So, there's a bunch of rules and best practices. A lot of things you want to do in there, making sure whatever you're de when we're developing these things, it's designed in, in such a fashion to be maintainable and sustainable. Right. We'll be talking more about that. Uh, need for access security. 
as well as um, adaptability. You know, these are all things that um, you know we need to make sure that that are that are put in place. You know, you can broke it. You know, databases contain a lot of extremely valuable information. You know, you think about you know the you know, the challenges people have now around privacy and you know your your private information. You know that that's where you know hackers you know are really focused on getting into systems. So the ability to protect that stuff and um, you know maintain it and sustain it very important. Right. Um, you know, once these things are built, once a database is built, it's it's not easy to necessarily change it. You don't want to be changing this stuff, you know, willy nilly on the fly. You know, example, you know, the you know, you, if you create a database, you start putting records into it. You wake up one morning, you realize you've got twenty million records in this database. It's making a change to a database that has twenty million records on it is not something you can do, you know, very easily. You know, you have to, it can be done, you know, a lot of times it has to be done, but it takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of work. That's, it goes back to this question of the, of the design and the ability to do work with. Right? You know, so this idea of a, you know, a master plan and sticking to the plan and enforcing the rules around the plan is all part and parcel of this stuff. So just some definitions, some stuff you would see in a master plan, you know, basically what a system would look like, you know, how does it work in the organization, who owns it, what are the, you know, what are, how is it constructed, how is it implemented, you know, basically who is watching over it and, and the implementation, the schedule of each one. These are, you know, these can be very large, complicated projects to put these things in. You think about building it, you know, building a, a city, you know, kind of a different, the different thing would go into it. Think of it in a computer terms. A lot of different types of people, different types of roles are needed to be able to make this stuff work. Part and parcel of this is we work with databases, and we'll be looking at this, something called we call entity diagrams. All right? So basically, it's the pretty pictures that you know define what it describe what a database looks like. You know, it's, so what it does is it shows you the structure of the database, what everything is called, what the rules are around it, and also it also shows you the relationships between tables. Right? Remember, you can have situations where you have a hundred thousand, you know, a hundred thousand tables in a uh, in an application. Well, you know, not every table talks to every other table. So there's re there's specific relationships, you know, and there's you know some things are, you know, one, you know, the entries in one table will match, you know, entries in another table one to one. Other times we'll have situations where the entries in one table will will have a relationship of many to one. For every one item, there are multiple items in another database, in another table. So these are all things that kind of are, you know, we'll be going, we'll be looking at entity, di entity diagrams as we go through this stuff. Right. Some different techniques, you know, as we talked about kind of the requirements, it's really the three major stages of, as we talked about this previously, you know, a requirements phase, you gather all this information, what do you want to do, kind of organizing and structuring it, taking that information, turning it into a logical design. When the logical design is completed, that ultimately will be translated into physical, basically what runs on a computer, where does it run, how does it run, right? So, and usually this is the sequence, you know, this, and this is the sequence it follows. You know, requirements comes first, Logical design second, physical design third. You know, a, a little more information around the data dictionary. The thing to remember about a database is it is made up of rules. Everything has to be defined. So this data dictionary is something that we use to help us, you know, where we store all this information about what these things look like, what the structures of the database look like, and, and basically what it, you know, what it means. So it takes a lot of, as you can see, a lot of discipline, you know, a lot of, um, uh, structure in setting this stuff up and doing it the right way. So the schemas, as we talked about the schemas, you know, basically uh, taking all of these different views, all these different things, creating a logical design. Um, and, there's a, and there's a couple different examples of these things of what these of what these models look like that we'll be looking at, you know, over the term. All right. But you know, the idea is what you want to do is. You know, you write all this stuff down and make sure it all design that it, everything is working 
you know, correctly. And then you, that is your plan. And then you build out the physical to the plan. All right. You know, this, you know, we explored the relational model of data elements are tables. Tables are also known as relations. All right. And the relationships are between the tables. Um, and we'll, as I said, we'll, we'll go through this a, a, over the course of the term, but just, just want to introduce some of the concepts, some of the terminology right now. You know, the role of a project, there's really, you know, obviously the top management, basically the people who will ultimately own it, the people who pay for it, you know, basically uh, are in charge of the overall direction, making sure things are done the way that things are supposed to be done and, does, and the database systems do what it does, what it's supposed to do. The resources manager, basically, or, you know, basically having the responsibility of, of the development and, you know, of the database systems. Uh, a couple different of, you know, from a due level perspective, the people are actually doing the work. The information analyst, which is doing um, the design and implementation of particular components of these things. The database analyst, which is really the, you know, the, uh, the folks who are responsible for taking um, the logical design and translating it into, you know, physical software and in physical. Uh, the application programmers are designed to, you know, take what has been built and turn it into programs. And finally, you know, and this is, you know, the, a lot of times with databases, the, the, these folks here, the database administrators, you know, basically they are responsible for the care and feeding of the databases. And, they, you know, so the, keeping the implementation, you know, basically maintaining it, installing it, and then over the life of the database, keeping it alive. So you see a lot of database administration and this particular tools and techniques, we'll be talking a, a fair amount about you know, this idea of what a database administrator does over the course of our uh, semester. You know, um, you know, people are using data, you know, the idea of user concerns, database views. People have different needs for a database. Not everybody uses it for the same thing. Fle databases are very flexible. They can be adapted for different people's uses. but. Once again, it's also not something that happens automatically. It has to be planned out and uh, you know laid out. All right, so we can work together. So all different organizations, people in the organizations, we'll talk through. We'll be we'll be visiting some of this stuff over the course of the terms. How these things kind of all come together. And that is everything we need to know about chapter one. Thank you.